Do you want to understand what exactly this means? Let me compare them to the plastic suction cup, like pieces that some people use in climbing games or competitions to attach to walls. But the question here is why do ants' feet contain these two things? In the end, why does it have hooks? Why sensors? Why isn't just one thing enough? In a split second, it begins to remove the suction, taking it a step further. I wonder how the ants would behave if the surface in front of them was completely smooth, like glass, for example. In this case, the second tool comes into play. Is it possible that we can benefit in one way or another from the mechanism of insects and some other organisms attaching to walls and apply it in our daily lives? All you have to do is calm yourself down and withdraw from the room. Then call the police, the special forces, the FBI and the CIA, and they will handle it simple. First, we must take into account an important thing which is that the dimensions of the world for us are completely different from the dimensions of the world for small creatures, specifically insects. Walking is the physical movement of the body from one point to another over some time. Walking requires movement, and the only thing that can hinder walking or movement is an obstacle. The truth is that this definition of walking applies to all beings except two things. The first thing is an insect and some small creatures, and the second thing is Spider-Man. These are two things that are no different from the presence of an obstacle in front of them during movement. But let's just leave Spider-Man to the side for now and focus on the insects, specifically the ants. Ants are creatures that are considered an icon of miracles in all fields. Almost whether reconstruction, survival, activity, hard work, and other things. Their superiority increases because they have an amazing ability to overcome any obstacle. They also walk on anything they encounter. This means that if you once tried to block an ant's path using your hand, you would find that it climbed onto your hand very naturally, and then it walked over it and reached the other side. She may also want to pinch you on your hand before getting down to tell you not to do that move again, please. Aside from your hand being pinched by the ant, the question that arises here is how the ant can walk on anything it encounters, even if the object is upside down or in the opposite direction to gravity. Is this because the ant has many legs, for example? Or what is the idea? Welcome, I am Mohammed Saleh, and in this episode we will answer the question How do ants walk on the wall and ceiling? Before we start, if you are still new to the channel, do not forget to subscribe to the channel and activate the bell to receive our videos first. First, we must take into account an important thing which is that the dimensions of the world for us are completely different from the dimensions of the world for small creatures, specifically insects. Even the mechanism of intuition for natural phenomena is completely different from the mechanism of intuition for small organisms. What does this mean? Suppose there is a group of small cracks on the ground and a person is standing in front of them and wants to cross. Logically, he will easily cross and step on the cracks in the ground, very naturally, without any problems. What one might think is that the ground has cracks. The reason for this is that his foot will be much larger than this longing. But let's imagine that, instead of the person crossing the road, an ant is standing there and trying to cross the road. In this case, the cracks, which he did not care about at all and did not cause him any problems, would be the biggest cosmic disaster for the ant. It will be like the deep pits and cracks underground found in plains and mountainous areas for us. This is because the dimensions of the world for us are different from the dimensions of the world for it. Does this mean that different dimensions of the world are an advantage to us? 
The difference in world dimensions between us and smaller creatures may be to their advantage in some matters. This means that you will find some types of insects that can walk on the surface of water, for example. This is because penetrating a flat surface and the forces of attraction between its molecules are considered very strong for insects, as they can carry the insect and move with it, while we could not do this due to our large size. In the same topic, humans can project an ant's ability to climb walls, ceilings and other obstacles it encounters. If we take a closer look at the anatomy of the ant's foot, we will find that it contains very small claws that resemble the hooks that humans use to climb rocks and mountains. In addition, the end, feet, also have some claws. But the question here is why do ant's feet contain these two things? In the end, why does it have hooks? Why sensors? Why isn't just one thing enough? Let it be celandine, for example. The fact is that ants' feet contain these tools because they are exposed to two different types of surfaces, rough surface and smooth surface. Depending on the type of surface, the ant begins to prepare the appropriate mechanism to deal with the surface. Let's start with rough surfaces. Ants can only use hooks on rough surfaces. Here we want to clarify an important thing. There is a big difference between a smooth surface for us and the smooth surface of an ant, sized organism. Surfaces that are soft to us, although nice to us, may be too hard for an ant. If you could look at these surfaces under an electron microscope, you would discover that they were very rough and full of lines and obstructions. The ant can easily place its hook on it and it moves confidently. Well, in the second case, I wonder how the ants would behave if the surface in front of them was completely smooth, like glass, for example. In this case, the second tool comes into play and the ant is presented, which is the tentacle tool. Do you want to understand what exactly this means? Let me compare them to the plastic suction cup, like pieces that some people use in climbing games or competitions to attach to walls. This is the same mechanism that ants use to climb on smooth surfaces. He climbs on the glass, just like suction. In a split second, it begins to remove the suction, taking it a step further and making it cling to the glass again through the same sensors. It continues until it comes off the smooth surface. Simply put, ants use two tools for walking and climbing. Hooks are formed if the surfaces are rough and full of bumps and large openings for the ant and the claws with which it moves on smooth surfaces such as glass. It is worth noting that some types of insects have more options than the previous two options. This option is that the insect is able to secrete a thin layer of oil and sticky material from its feet. These secretions allow the insect to adhere to the ceiling very strongly. One of the most famous insects that have this feature are cockroaches. And this is what makes them very stable while moving on walls and surfaces. This is a message that we would like to address to girls specifically. If you see a cockroach standing on the ceiling, there is no need to scream, as this will not happen under any circumstances and nothing will happen to it. All you have to do is calm yourself down and withdraw from the room then call the police, the special forces, the FBI and the CIA, and they will handle it simple. Another thing we have to say is that the task of walking on the ceiling can be a very stressful and arduous task for some species of ants. Of course they can do that, but it is not preferable to them at all. Not all ant species have the ability to walk upside down or walk on surfaces facing gravity. Most of the ant species that walk easily on these surfaces are species that live on trees and inhabit gardens and fields. They are very good at climbing. 
Not only can an ant walk on a ceiling, it has the ability to walk on a ceiling while carrying objects much heavier than its own weight. Okay, now that we have clarified the issue, is the issue of sticking to walls and ceilings specific to insects only? Actually, no. The topic is present in a very large number of reptiles. Many reptiles can climb and cling to walls and ceilings. The most famous of these reptiles is the gecko. This creature has the unusual ability to attach to ceilings and may remain dormant for a very long time, up to days. Moreover, it can lift loads that exceed its own weight while standing against gravity and never fall off its feet. All this because it has cilia and adhesives on its paws and feet. Through it, it can adhere to the microscopic terrain of all surfaces. Although other species of reptiles can climb walls, down paws outperform most reptiles at this task. Before we wrap up the episode, let's ask a question. Is it possible that we can benefit in one way or another from the mechanism of insects and some other organisms attaching to walls and apply it in our daily lives? For example, the fact is that we can do it. We can and have applied these insect adhesion mechanisms in a large number of fields. Mercedes, for example, has commissioned personnel from the Max Planck Institute. They are conducting a study on the secret of some types of insects stabilizing on moving surfaces without falling. Accordingly, the Institute's scientists placed a certain insect on a circular copper disc and continued to rotate it gradually. Of course, it was expected that the insect would fall. But the strange thing is that that did not happen. The insect remained completely fixed in place and did not move. They continued to increase the rotation speed until it reached 3,000 revolutions per minute. Despite this, the insect remained firmly in place and did not fall. For this reason, they thought of applying this adhesion mechanism to prevent car tires from slipping and leaving the road, regardless of their rotation speed or angle, and many other applications. Like super sticky glue, for example, or using it to help robots stand and move. What's even stranger is that he suggests using the same mechanism to make gloves and shoes for rescue and firefighters to use so they can climb walls and carry out their tasks easily. Although this last idea sounds a bit farcical, it is something that can be done, and our history of drawing inspiration from animals and birds is the best proof of this. It is not far off that one day we will hear about gloves and shoes that will allow us to walk on a wall. It is not far-fetched that there are some parties already working on this matter. Thus, today we answered the question, How do ants walk on the wall and ceiling? For those who enter the channel for the first time, this channel will answer the questions that may come to your mind. If you have a question that confuses you, write it to us in the comments below the video so we can answer it for you. If you like the video, don't forget to like and share. For people who are watching us for the first time, subscribe and activate the bell to receive our videos first. See you in the next episode. Goodbye!